Good evening, Kenton community. My name is Sabatino Samato. I am your superintendent, and this is your weekly connection. Now, um, folks, uh, I want to get right to it. Um, the weekly connection is only going to focus on where we are as a district, what to expect moving forward. We're going to talk about the plan. We're going to talk about the hurdles, just like we had some of that conversation the other night at the board meeting. Um, and then I, I do want to end off tonight with showing you what testing looks like. I have a video, one minute quick video to show families what testing looks like. So um, I'm going to share and, and please just bear with me here for a moment. I don't have the wonderful Patrick Finelli working with me tonight <clears throat> to uh, use technology. So everyone's going to have to kind of bear with me. Okay. So now you're seeing in front of you, um, uh, I have a three slide presentation. Uh, the first slide is plan moving forward. You're gonna notice the very first thing on this slide is a flashing red light. Now that's a very stark contrast to last Friday. Last Friday, I told you we were at a flashing yellow. We are proceeding with caution. A flashing red is much different, folks. It's, we have to stop and look around before we can proceed. Now, the good thing is that we're not at a solid red. We're at a flashing red. Flashing red, stop, and then we can still proceed. But some of that stop is happening, and, and I gotta be very explicit with what that stop means. So how we're gonna continue to proceed is currently our K-1 and self-contained special education students, they're attending hybrid. Those, those kiddos are going to continue in the hybrid model. They will continue as of Monday. This upcoming Monday, we're not moving you to remote. Um, being in a yellow zone, that comes with a lot of challenges, and we're, we're going to have to focus on meeting the 20% testing requirements that we need in order to stay in a hybrid model with this group. So please, please understand that. Now, people in this group, you gotta understand also, being in a yellow, our numbers in our community are not looking good. Now, the good thing is, is that we're not seeing that numbers in, in schools, school districts, we're not seeing the numbers in schools going crazy or schools being the cause of transmission, but we're seeing that our outside activity is creating that, those higher numbers. And folks, unfortunately, if we don't get it under control and we don't get it under control really quickly as a community, as a society, then we will find ourselves in a cluster orange or a cluster red, which means that we'll have to move everybody to fully remote. So we won't go forward anymore. We'll have to take a, a full step backward. And this group, you have to be prepared that if the governor were to make that announcement, we would be following up with an announcement that we have to move to a fully remote. So please be prepared for that, families. Um, it could happen at, at any time if we can't bring these numbers down. So right now we're working off the premise that we're a yellow, and this is our first group that will have to experience the testing. The testing is not as bad as, as what we, uh, you know, uh, were worried that it was going to be. And I, I will talk about that in a minute when it comes to some of the hurdles and what we'll have to do for the testing, but it's gonna take us all as a community. Now the hard part, the real hard part, is that our next phase that was scheduled to come back on Monday that's the flashing red. We're going to have to put a pause on that. Now, we're not, it's not that we're getting rid of that. We're just going to have to put a pause on that. So we're pausing the phase in. These students will continue taking part in their remote learning four days of synchronous instruction. VLA students will remain with their current teachers. Now, what that means is our VLA students, if we were moving forward and we weren't in this yellow zone, then our students that were staying in VLA would have had new ELA and math teachers starting Monday, they're not going to because we're putting a pause on this. You're going to stay with your original teachers while we're doing this in grades two through four. Um, our grades five, we're also pausing. You're gonna remain in remote as well. 
And, and folks, hopefully this next group we're going to be able to do within a couple weeks here, but please stay tuned and you'll understand what some of the challenges that we're facing. Now our six through 12 model that we just announced last week, we're not tossing that to the side, that, that plan, but we are going to have to pause that plan as well. And those students are going to stay in their virtual model right now of four days of synchronous instruction. Now, uh, meal distribution will remain unchanged by, for right now. And I, I just want to be clear, folks, every Friday when I give you these announcements, I'll never announce a, a change other than for today. I'll never announce a change for the upcoming Monday. It's not fair to families. And to be perfectly honest, as a district, we're going to need time to always make adjustments and move forward for our next group from scheduling to computers to our teachers. Our teachers are working so hard uh, to be ready for, so those teachers can be ready for the, for the next group. We're ready, but it, it takes a little bit. And also families need a little bit more uh, lead time as well. So every Friday when I make an announcement, it won't be for that, follow, for that next Monday, but it'll be for the following Monday. So every Friday, I'll update you on what our plan is moving forward. Changes will not be for the following week, but for the week after that. For example, next Friday, this next Friday, I will announce what our plan will be for November 30th. So we know right now that we're not going to be bringing any um, more groups back prior to November 30th. November 30th is gonna be the earliest that we will for our next model or our next phase in of those grades two through five. So stay tuned, that's the absolute earliest. Like I said, if, if for some reason we go to an orange or red, it might even be longer. So we really need to come together, folks. I know we're getting COVID tired, COVID fatigue. Uh, a great line that I heard, um, uh, during a press conference the other day, we're getting COVID fatigue, but the reality is COVID doesn't get fatigued. So we can't afford to become COVID fatigued because that's when the sickness really prevails and we have more positive rates, greater positive rates. And then, you know, if, if we change from a yellow to an orange or to a red, it's not just schools that are impacted. There's a lot of things in society that get impacted, businesses, people working really hard, all of you at home. So we really need to, I got to encourage us as much as I can to do this as a community. So just to focus on this slide again, status quo from where we are right now, our, our K-1s and self-contained will continue as of right now on Monday. I'm going to tell you what we figured out with the testing and where we are in the testing in just a moment. Our grade two through five, we're going to pause on that right now. And then our grade six through 12, of course, um, we're gonna continue to try and focus on <clears throat> getting them back as well, but everything is on a pause right now. So what are some of these challenges? Um, I wanna tell you um, a couple of uh, things that I've learned more since Tuesday's board meeting and tell you about a couple of things that I was actually wrong about, and I'm glad to be wrong about them. I'll share that with you but also what we've done since the board meeting. So folks, we've had to put in an application and we have this pending now to become a limited services laboratory, LSL license to carry out the testing at all of our school sites. We, we have confirmation that that paperwork is in and that we're, we're waiting to hear about that. And you know, the great thing about the testing is that um, our state is going to be providing the rapid tests for us free of charge. The challenge is, how are we going to administer the tests? So you'll see the next bullet, we've contacted service providers because folks, people have asked, well, can't the nurses just do them? Of course our nursing staff is gonna help out where they can, but we gotta remember, our nursing staff is also our nursing staff during a pandemic COVID where they have to worry about what's going on in the school during the regular day as well. And we're looking at a lot of different models, folks. We're looking at testing during the day. We're looking at, can we have testing on the weekend? Can we have testing off hours? Can we have testing drive up uh, different uh, models going on? 
And, and this is what we'd be contracting for or looking for overtime for or whatever we could do. But just to give you an example, and this isn't, we're not gonna focus on the money, but another challenge, um, just one of the plans that we looked at just to be able to implement it in those services would cost us an, an additional $10,000 a week minimum. That's on the low end. And I, I shared that with you the other day that's not to say that's the only model. That's not to say that, you know, we're, we're only going to focus on that. We'll do in everything that we can in our power. But understand, it, it can't just be our nurses that are, that are doing this. Our district, Kenton, is a very large district. It's one of the largest suburban districts that we have. And you'll see some of the numbers that are there just in the model that we have. Once we have our license agreement, I'm looking at bullet number four. With our service provider, we can request tests from the New York State Department of Health. Right now, we would need to be giving 450 tests per week just in our K1 self-contained model. For our next group to bring them back, we would have to administer 710 tests per week. For all of our students being back in a hybrid, we'd have to, we'd have to perform 1,210 uh, tests per week, per week. Now that equates to 20% of our students and staff. Now here's the thing I was wrong about. If you don't want testing, we're not gonna have to force you into a remote model, but we do have to meet this 20% every week. So I'm gonna need people that are, that are willing, families that are willing to remember when we're consenting, we're saying, yeah, my, my kiddo um, can uh, have this test in school and folks, it's not one of the tests that we're used to seeing on the news where that long thing goes all the way up into the nasal cavity. You see people struggling. That's, it does go into the nose, but not like that. It's just at the very rim of the nose. There's not a pain that's associated with it at all. Um, I'm gonna show you a video so that you can see. Now, eventually, folks, at the beginning of the week, you gotta be ready that we're gonna be sending uh, consent to test home. Now, in our survey, and the, uh, the point of the survey was just to get a feel, 51% of our family said that they would not consent to testing. I'm hoping that those numbers go down, especially after watching this video. So keep an eye out for this consent form, um, but we will need to, to worry about this uh, right away, right away. So I want you to be prepared for that, our, our K-1 um, and self-contained students. And remember, if you don't consent, I'm not gonna be forcing you to go to a remote model. I'm not going to be. Um, we can focus on a, a random 20% from those who agree, but I do need agreement. Um, I know our, our staff is on board and of course it's difficult on our staff too, but they're gonna do everything that they can um, to make sure that we're meeting it on that end. Um, and families, just, just please be prepared for this because it is going to be a heavy lift. Um, once again, if we move to a orange or red, we're all remote and really testing isn't going to be a, a, a huge option right away. And it turns into numbers like a hundred percent and 25% weekly non-repetitive groups having to be tested. So it's a completely different ball game. We're in yellow, we gotta bring these numbers down so we could stay in yellow and then completely come out of yellow and we can move forward with hybrid and get our kids back in school. That, that's the plan, that, that's where we're moving. Um, so now I'm gonna ask you to be patient and actually um, watch, this, watch this video. The, the tests that we're, that we're gonna be using, and once again, the tests are actually provided free of charge by New York State Department of Health, but it's actually the testing and the process that would cost us money and funds. But this test is the Abbott Binex Now Nasal Rapid Test. So I'm gonna actually, so bear with me, I'm gonna bring you to the video. I will demonstrate a self swab for you to show you just exactly how easy the test is performed. So um, literally it almost could not be easier. It starts with six drops of liquid onto this piece of paper. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then there's a nasal swab. 
And again, this is, um, this is not the deep brain biopsy that we talk about. Uh, this will generally be done by a healthcare provider, but it can be done supervised. It's this easy. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Into the test, twisted three times. The adhesive is pulled off and you wait 15 minutes. And that is the test. It really could not be easier than this. This is a very sophisticated little piece of cardboard with lots of antibodies and incredible technology into that. So ladies and gentlemen, um, that's, that's it. Now I, I'm gonna share with you again, um, uh, just to go back to our, our PowerPoint presentation. Um, you can see it's, it's really not that, that uh, really in, intrusive, that really difficult test. Nonetheless, I know it's still scary for, for kids. It's scary for families. Um, we're learning more about the tests. Listen, folks, we have to stick to some things that we know are true. For example, if a kid, if your child is sick, symptomatic, anything, fever, any one of the symptoms, you cannot send them to school. You can't, especially the way that this is, that this is, is moving around our, our communities right now. Um, the thing that's going to shut us down is us having to move to these, these, other, um, uh, these other zones. And, and we don't want to be in that position. So please make sure you're doing everything that you can as a family, as a society. We know it's hard. We're so appreciative of your dedication, everything that you've been doing. Our families have been working tremendously hard. Our, our second through fifth grade families, I can't apologize to you enough. If we could get this testing going in the right direction for who we have now, then we'll take it to the next level and we'll move our next group in. So hopefully by next Friday, I have some better news for you as a community. I'm able to tell you something more. Um, I'm fearful our numbers have not been going in the right direction. Um, I'm fearful that we might be put into a different zone so please do what we can do. It is extremely uncomfortable right now. Um, and I, I, I know it's difficult on our families. I, I, everyone's working hard. Everyone wants to be done with this. Uh, you, we can see the finish line, folks. We know that there's a vaccine that's on the way. Um, it has to be FDA approved. We've heard updates on that. Of course, we're gonna have major challenges as soon as that vaccine is released not only uh, administering vaccines, but doing it in a timely and equitable fashion. Um, so we know we, gotta, we, we have a long haul yet together, folks. We have a long haul. Um, we can't forget our priorities. <coughs> our priorities have to be, as a district, our safety of our students is first. Right now, I feel that our schools are safe. We have the evidence of it. I will be very honest, the moment that I feel that it's not safe anymore, then yes, I'm going to move our K and one and self-contained back to remote. But I feel that it's safe. I would not be exposing us to something that I did not feel was safe. If it becomes too challenging because too many people are, are going down or our contacts of people who are positives and we have uh, other issues, uh, not just with it spreading in school, but we're all families. And we, we're all seeing these rates going crazy. And we all know somebody who's been diagnosed now. And, and the contact tracing is, is, is so, it, it's getting, the numbers are just growing. That might be one of the things that puts us into a remote as well. I just want us to be prepared. Be prepared. Um, I wish I had better news for you today. But I know that together, folks, we have the Kenton pride. We're workers. We can work and do this together. I know that we will be Kenton strong. I know that we will persevere through this. Together, together, we need to continue to bring Kenton forward. We're making the steps. This is a step backwards, but we can absolutely make those leaps and bounds forward if we do it together. 
Thank you very much for your attention this evening. Once again, I'm sorry that we don't have better news. Please stay safe. Please hunker down. Please keep your family close and please wear masks and, and be ready uh, together to do everything that we need to do as a society to get this back under control. Thank you, God bless, and have a great weekend.